Hello and welcome back to our channel. Let's talk about a very important NCLEX topic, blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is not considered a routine procedure. That is why it's very important to pay 100% vigilance and attention while performing it. It is an RN scope of practice procedures, but LPNs are able to monitor the patients throughout. Now, the very first thing is to obtain consent, which is done by the physician, but as nurses, we're supposed to be checking if the consent has been taken or not. Followed by which, we have to make sure to double check every single document and the bag of blood for compatibility. Now, who does that? It can be two registered nurses, or one RN and one LPN. Followed by this, we must obtain baseline vital signs for our patients in order to understand how they're behaving throughout transfusion. It is also important to get two IV lines started before the procedure. Once you receive the bag for administration after you have double checked, it is important that you must administer or start the blood transfusion within 30 minutes. If you're not able to do so due to any reason, please return the bag to blood bank as you're not able to store it in your unit refrigerator. As far as heating or warming of the blood is concerned, we never need to do that unless there is multiple transfusions happening all at the same time. But in case you need to warm it up, there are special blood warmers available. So do not warm it in your unit microwave. The transfusion must be done within two to four hours to ensure no infection is being given to the patient while transfusing. Now, one of the very important nursing responsibility is to stay with the patient for the first 15 minutes and monitor them for any kind of transfusion reactions because they tend to happen in those 15 minutes. But throughout the transfusion, you should be routinely monitoring them and continue to check their vital signs. Now let's talk about the most important thing which is tested so commonly on NCLEX and that is the transfusion reactions. We're always concerned about three types of reactions. The first ones being hemolytic, followed by allergic, and the last ones are the febrile reactions. Now, whenever a reaction happens, it is important for us to know the signs and symptoms. When it comes to allergic and febrile reactions, we're basically looking at fever, chills, tachycardia, tachypnea, and in some cases, hypotension as well. But specifically for hemolytic reactions, Apart from all these symptoms, you're also going to see back pain. So pay attention to the word back pain. If your patient is getting a transfusion, if they're having back pain, always think about hemolytic reactions because that's how NCLEX tricks you. Now what to do? What is your priority nursing responsibility? Which is that you must stop the transfusion immediately. Once you stop it, gather all your bags, tubings, and send it to the blood bank. You must also notify the physician and the blood bank ASAP. And for the IV line, you must keep it open with normal saline. And lastly, in some cases, according to your facility policy, you're also expected to obtain blood or urine samples. So understand your facility policy on that. So these are some of the most important points you must remember as a nurse whenever you're starting blood transfusion. For more such content, please consider subscribing. Thank you.